Hello friends and welcome back to my scuff progression. Since the last episode, Adele was released and that will probably be the primary focus of this video. In the background, I'll leave leveling footage that I recorded of it. I've attempted to second main a few characters, but none of them have gripped me as well as Adele has. I'm still not used to managing the sword up time, but I'll eventually get used to it, or at least I hope. It'll definitely be easier when they change the duration to 40 seconds instead of the 20 seconds it is currently. Other than sword up time, the class has been fantastic to play, and with the current events surrounding it, I highly recommend to play one as they're easy to pick up and quite strong from the beginning. I chose to actually play through the story for once to gain access to Adele's beginner ability, which is called Recalling Greatness. This skill has 10 levels and levels up upon completing story quests. The max level grants 10% critical damage and 10% attack, which suffice to say is really nice to have. So I pretty much rushed my Adele to 200 for all the goodies and have been doing dailies on it since. I have chosen to solo progress the character and have already managed to clear CRA and am currently working on Hard Mag. Hard Magnus is definitely doable at my current position, but my ability to control Adele is still lacking as I'm not the most mechanically talented player. At the time of recording this audio, my Adele is currently 210 and has just completed the Choo Choo Island free quest. I've also managed to fill all my equip slots except for the heart, and I'm currently taking it slow as I continue to grind on my Thunderbreaker in hopes of achieving 275. Adele gains a set of time-limited CRA gear at 150, and on top of that there's currently a Maple Relay occurring. I use the fake Absolab weapon on my Adele to make CRA that much easier. Even without AK Legion and my Link skills, I'm confident I'd have the damage to take these bosses down. To switch focus quickly, I want to talk about my Thunderbreaker. I've been grinding at least 4 hours a day, and I would be grinding more if I wasn't running so many bosses now. I'm now running 3 sets of Hard Will and Hard Lucid across 2 Kanas and my Thunderbreaker. On top of that, I'm also running Hard Damien on my Thunderbreaker and one of my Kanas, and also helping out a Hard Lotus party on a Kana as well. Needless to say, my boss schedule is extremely packed right now, and it leaves a lot less time to grind. I expect to drop a few of these bosses once life starts to normalize a bit more. In all honesty, I'm probably playing so much just because I'm limited on what I can do nowadays. I'm really just waiting for classes to start as my internship fell through due to the global circumstances. Either way, I've been enjoying helping out my friends in these bosses and it's always nice to have a chance at drops even if they aren't on my main character. I should mention that the weekend that I'm recording and editing this video is the weekend where we got a rerun of DMT and Reboot. The first iteration was an utter mess and I would show footage, but a lot of it is just clicking the same button over and over again hoping for a different outcome. As of recording this, they cancelled the last two blocks of DMT, so I suspect a Maple Membo is on the way. Again. Circling back to talk about the Thunderbreaker again, I should also mention that there was a 1 plus 1 star forcing event a few weeks back, and I took that opportunity to star my arcane armors to 15 stars in preparation for a 5-10-15 event. I got really lucky and managed to finish all four armor pieces in around 3 billion mesos. In addition, some other upgrades I got on my Thunderbreaker include cubing my Sweetwater Pendant to 3-line strength. I went from 23% strength to 30% strength. I used the red cube bundles from the first DMT to do this. I did it off event, but the pendant was already legendary, so it really wasn't a waste. The rice shop also had some chaos circulators, three to be exact. I used these three in hopes of getting perfect or close to perfect second and third lines on my inner ability. No such luck this time either though. I'm still aiming for the 21 attack and at least 18% crit on my second and third lines. As covered in a previous video, I then plan to reroll the first line for 20% boss. From previous experience, it shouldn't be too awful rerolling that first line, but RNG is always RNG. I also finished another small project, though it really wasn't that small. I've been doing Oz at least twice a day and been saving boxes. I told myself I'd save all the rank 5, rank 2, and hidden ring boxes until I reached 50 rank 2 boxes, which I did manage to achieve. I opened all 50 and did manage to get lucky enough to land one of the two rings I've been after. I've been after a Ring of Restraint 4, which grants 100% weapon attack for 15 seconds, and Weapon Jump S4, which takes 400% of your weapon's attack and adds it to your stat. This is then multiplied by potentials. I did not manage to pull a Roar 4, or a Ring of Restraint 4, unfortunately, but I did manage to pull the Weapon Jump 4. I'm really happy with this pull as it will definitely come in handy. To put it in perspective, Weapon Jump 4 increased my 40 second BA battle analysis by roughly 10%. I went from a 2.8 trill BA to a 3.1 trill BA. This was on an oak dummy, not a straw dummy by the way. Some other notable rings I pulled include a Cleansing Ring 3, which may come in handy later, and I also pulled a Totaling Ring 4, which also might be useful. I know for Night Lords and Nightwalkers it tends to be better than a Weapon Jump due to the low base attack on Claws. 
I'll have to do some tests and figure out if the totaling 4 can be of use to me. It might turn into my soft bind ring, but for now I'll keep it in my inventory. With all of that said and done, I really don't have much else to show you. I'll see you in the next one, I guess. Bye-bye.